Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Did you tell somebody about Jesus this week? All right? Come on now. All right, also, you've got your cards that are printed up to invite folks to, to, uh, uh, to church and talk to them about Jesus. Uh, did you pass out any cards this week? Okay? All right, we're going to do better next week, aren't we? Where can we get more? Uh, I've got two or three here. So, so uh, but we will get you more of those. All right, um, reading your Bible through, how about reading every day last week? Anybody on time doing that? You read your Bible every day last week. Way to go. All right, and then reading through the Bible on our schedule, we would have been in... Uh, Proverbs and Romans. Uh, in the book of Proverbs, you would have found the answer to this one. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Very good. Uh, by the way, who... You know how I remember that? How do you remember that? That's on my report card, on the cover of my report card. <laughs> when you were in school. What was it? What was on your report card? That verse. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wow, she had a great memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that was that was just a few days ago. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we were in Proverbs. Who wrote most of the Proverbs? Solomon. Solomon. Very good. In the New Testament. Uh, there's a sad uh, state of affairs in the church in Corinth. And Paul wrote uh, uh, the first letter to the church at Corinth to address a particular, and a part of it was addressing a particular sin. What was that sin? Sexual immorality. Sexual immorality. Uh, in uh, Specifically, it was uh, a man in the church uh, uh, was uh, shacking up with his daddy's wife. So, uh, and it was open and, and public. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, our purpose, actually, uh, our purpose is to become m mature Christians and to uh, love God and be getting closer to Him every day, but out of that ought to come uh, to see unbelieving people become committed followers of Jesus Christ. That's what we're hoping for. In the book of Galatians, we've been making our trek through the first uh, two sections, or in the books, chapters 1 and 2 and chapters 3 and 4. In 1 and 2, Paul uh, establishes a very personal defense of his apostleship. And then in chapters 3 and 4, he establishes that uh, salvation is by grace and by grace alone. Chapters 5 and 6, we learn how to walk in that grace. So we're in chapter 5, and we're going to pick up with verse 7, and we're going to go all the way through verse 16. So somebody read for us 7 through 10. 7 through 10. You are running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That, that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who called you. A little yeast years through the whole batch of dough. I am confined in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confession, whoever, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Exactly. All right. So 11 through 16. Somebody read that for us. Brothers and sisters. If I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. 
Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Mm -hmm. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Freedom. Freedom is addressed here, and in uh, uh, the uh, NLT, it, it uh, uses the word four times in this text that we read. The first time is in verse 8, uh, where it says, uh, God is the one that called you to freedom. And then again in verse 13, we've been called to live in freedom, uh, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Uh, freedom, let's, let's talk about that for just a minute. Uh, when you hear the word freedom, what comes to mind? Yeah. <laughs> Forgiveness. Okay. Uh, what was it, Kenny? Getting out of jail. Something, yeah, some sort of way, yeah. Okay. But is there also a free within, free within God as far as freedom? Freedom within God, okay. And I, I was kind of like, Kenny, I thought the opposite, slavery. Yeah, yeah. The opposite, Bond, slavery, Bond. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go there. Uh, we're going to talk about slavery and freedom. Uh, but uh, in our culture, uh, Freedom is becoming a very dangerous word, okay, because uh, it's being misinterpreted and misrepresented in a lot of ways. Um, people want to be free to do what they want to do without anybody saying anything about it, okay, uh, and they want to take away our freedom of speech in order to be able to do what they want to do without hearing any objections. So um, they want to be able to do wrong and be free from any suggestion of criticism and in their minds, this is the best level of freedom, uh, and our culture is demanding it. Uh, we're living in a world that demands freedom, and they not only want it to be tolerated, they want it to be celebrated and they want it to be propagated and normalized. I know it's a lot of words, but there's a progression there. Uh, they want it to be accepted, tolerated, and, and then uh, they, they, they want to have their celebration days, their celebration uh, parties, and, and, and celebrate their... Uh, their freedom to do what they want to do, and then they want to be about the business of spreading that uh, to our children and others, uh, and then to do it without, uh, without anybody saying there's anything wrong with yeah, that. This is wrong. Yeah. Uh, this is nothing new, by the way. It is not new. You go back 3,000 years to uh, the nation Israel, and you're following them with, uh, uh, in the book of Judges. Uh, the Bible says that they did whatever was right in their own eyes. And you saw a progression. If you study the book of Judges, you'll see that the children of Israel, uh, were the, they are living in the promised land, okay? They're in the promised land because Judges follows Joshua, and Joshua is the one that led them to, in the conquest of, of uh, uh, the, the promised land. But in Judges, 
There they are living in prosperity and they turn away from God and they begin to worship idols. And anytime a prophet would come along and say, hey guys, you need to quit that mess and come back to God. Their response was, we got to get rid of that guy and his voice. It's the same thing going on today, isn't it? We got to we got to silence those that are speaking against our freedom to do what we want to do. Okay, so it's and by the way in in that setting, every time they would get really despicable, God would send somebody the Assyrians or the the uh, 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 Philistines or somebody to come and oppress them. Midianites, and then God would raise up a judge who would lead in conquest to deliver them. So it was, uh, they'd get delivered, and then they would live in prosperity, then they would turn from God, and then God would send judgment. And, and we're, we're, we may be approaching the judgment phase mm-hmm. of, uh, of that cycle. Uh, so we know what freedom is not. Freedom is not doing what we want to do, regardless of whether it's right or wrong, and then trying to silence every voice that cries out against our immorality. That's not freedom. Uh, But who needs it? Who needs freedom? Christ. Hmm? Christ. Uh, We we need Christ. We, We need freedom in Him, but... Who, who is it that needs real freedom? Sinners. All of us, right? All of us. Yeah, all of us. Um, the problem in this world is that it is addiction, okay? Uh, everybody struggles with addiction. Everybody, okay? Uh, what kind of struggles, what kind of addictions... Do do you see in people around you? What are what are folks addicted to? Anxiety. Anxiety. Cell phone. Oh, how many hours a day do you spend looking at your cell phone? Uh oh. Huh? Okay. All right. So we are all addicted to something. I see that. I see that hand. <laughs> she said in her sleep. Okay. The, uh, and the problem is that in every human uh, that lives, there's this thing called a, a carnal nature. And we struggle against that to live a life of spirituality but we are cursed with a body, uh, Paul called it this body of death, uh, that wants to do the wrong thing when the real us, our core us, wants to do the right thing. But they're, they're, the whole world is, is dealing with addiction, and it's called a sin addiction. All right? So uh, we... we so, Many of us know a little bit about dealing with addictions, and, and there's some great programs and, and, and organizations that help us in dealing with our addiction. Uh, but the problem is most people don't recognize their own addictions. They can see it in others easily enough. Uh, my word, there are some folks that, that look for imperfections in other people like there's a reward for doing so, you know. Uh, yeah, none of us, none of us, none of us need to look any further than in the mirror, okay, to find somebody that has an addiction, a sin addiction. So every human being apart from salvation in Christ is doomed to their addiction that will destroy both body and soul outside of Christ. But um, the human heart 
yearns to be free. And the human heart also knows guilt when we do and shame when we do the wrong thing until the human heart has been seared. And there are those people that are beyond feeling bad about the sins they commit because their conscience has been seared uh, and, and destroyed. But the whole human race is, uh, is struggling with sin addiction. Uh, and we think about an, uh, a heroin addict uh, in the back alley, uh, uh, desperate, feeling hopeless, waiting to die, to be out of the pain, uh, but doing what their body calls them to do. They're not free, are they? No, no. no. And that's, that's the idea of uh, uh, folks that clamor and say, I am free. I, I don't have to live under your rules or, or God's rules or, or anybody's rules. I'm free to do what I want to do. Uh, there was a, a famous song, and I, I think uh, Bing Crosby sang it, Free to Be Me. Uh, uh, you know, but. Uh, to go along with that heart thing. Yeah. I was, wasn't a day went by, even though I was in my addiction, where my heart wasn't struggling to do right. Fighting with the enemy. Yeah. You know, yeah. Get with the mind. And going, hey, you know, this, this is not what you want to do. This is not what you want to do. With the addiction. It was stronger than the alcohol. So yeah. it was within, the struggle was stronger. within. It wasn't you know, on the outskirts or right. looking out. It was just truthful be told in my heart and me, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because God puts that in every human heart. The knowledge of good and evil. Uh, remember, that was what was imparted to Adam and Eve when they sinned, the knowledge of good and evil. And it is inherent in all of us that uh, uh, we know when we do wrong. Oh boy, do we ever, right? We know. Uh, but this, this notion of wanting freedom, freedom to be who we want to be and do what we want to do, uh, is invading the church today. Uh, it did 3,000 years ago. The priests were complicit in the worship of idols and, and their uh, thumbing their nose at God Almighty. And now that's making its way into some churches where uh, uh, the attitude is we don't want people to feel bad about their sins we, we want them to, uh, to, to come and be a part of us. Uh, but the case is not that, uh, in, in many cases, that we want you to come and find Christ and change and get free from your addiction uh, to, that, to that lifestyle, to that uh, sin addiction. We want you to be comfortable with us. So that's, that's, that's invading the church today. Uh, and uh, uh, sin of all kinds is celebrated in some churches today from the leadership on down. But uh, we want freedom and we want to feel our freedom. And that's what Christ does when he comes. He sets us free, but there's another twist on that. Uh, there is a slavery that frees us, okay? Now, that's an oxymoron, if there ever was one. But there is a slavery that frees us. Paul said he was a slave to Christ. And he was free uh, uh, from the chains of the old life, free from the chains that the old law brought him. Uh, but uh, it, it is indeed a very positive 
slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, so can we say that everybody's a slave to something? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's a slave to something. We're either a slave to sin or we're a slave to Christ. And where do we, which of those do you think brings real freedom? Christ. Slavery to Christ Jesus. Uh, we belong to him. We don't belong to us. Okay? We don't belong to us. Why do we not belong to ourselves? Because what? Yeah. Uh, okay. We were created to serve God's purpose. We were created to serve God's purpose to be holy and in fellowship with a holy God. Okay, that's what we were created to be and do. And uh, out of our, our our slavery to sin, we can't do that. But when Christ comes and sets us free from that slavery to sin, we now become a slave, a slave to Christ because he now owns us. That's a part of slavery is, is ownership, okay? Uh, and Christ owns us for three reasons. What are the reasons that Christ owns us? He created us. Number one. He, loves us. he created us. He loves us. He loves us. All right. And through that love, he bought us. Mm -hmm. uh, he and the Father, uh, Ephesians 1 7, says he is so uh, full of kindness and grace that he bought our freedom. You know what he paid? His life. His son's life. With the blood of his son and forgave our sins. So we belong, to, we belong to Christ because he created us. There wasn't anything created according to the book of John that Christ didn't uh, create, okay? And he sustains it with the word of his power. So he created us. That's the first reason that we belong to him. We are his property, all right. The second reason that we belong to Christ is because he bought us with his blood. All right. The third reason, we have given ourselves to him. When we accepted his forgiveness, we gave ourselves to him. And now we belong to uh, you know the song, Now I belong to Jesus. We do belong. We are his property. Yeah, you surrender to his will and his way. Yeah. When you give yourself to Jesus. We have given ourselves to him. We, we are his property, lock, stock, and barrel, but there's still that part of us that wants to rebel against him. Yeah, that's the Oh. But the second line of that song is even better. Sing it. All right, sing it for us. <laughs> Jesus belongs to me. Yeah, Jesus belongs to me. Okay. Not for the, not for time alone, but for eternity. eternity. Yes. Oh, I love that song. Uh, and by the way, for you watching online, I hope the singing didn't uh, scare you off. <laughs> And say something, uh, say good morning or something too to, to let us know you stopped by. That encourages us. Thank you so much. Okay, so, so there is no freedom without slavery. And, but there can be slavery without freedom. Okay? Slavery to sin will take us, what was it uh, the old uh, song says that, uh, sin will take you farther than you ever intended to go. It will keep you longer than you ever intended to stay. And it'll cost you more than you ever intended to pay. That's what slavery does. Slavery to sin does 
to us. Look at the prodigal son as an example of that. Uh, but there, there, is, there is beauty in that slavery to Christ. And we see a picture of that in the uh, Old Testament where uh, if a slave decided that he wanted, and when he got to the end of his, his servitude and he was about to be set free to go out on his own, if he decided that he wanted to stay as he'd been treated so well and, and he was happy in his current state, he could stay and remain a slave to that owner. And then there was a mark that was put on him if that was his choice. He was, they stood next to the door, doorpost and, and there was a punch and all that was used to punch a hole in his ear uh, as a symbol that he was voluntarily uh, a slave to that master. Uh, the, the, and I imagine there was a little blood there when, when that was done. Imagine today that when we uh, uh, give ourselves to Jesus, it's his blood that's applied to our lives and we're covered with his blood. And now we serve him, not because we, we, uh, uh, we're forced to do so. We, we serve him because we love him because of what he has done for us. He forgave our sins and he bought our freedom from sin and addiction to sin. So th remember there, the two rules that we live by. What's the first one? Love God. love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. The second one is love, neighbor. love your neighbor as yourself. And, and where does that love come from? It comes from God himself because uh, John tells us that God is love. God is love. And if he lives in us, that love is going gonna, is gonna to flow through us. But let's, let's tune up and, and recognize uh, our slavery. And today you may be listening to me and, and not know freedom in Christ. I mean, you can. You can call on him to set you free. And that freedom really is becoming a slave to Christ uh, because we want to, because he created us, because he bought us, and because we can give ourselves to him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this discussion of freedom and, and, and slavery. Uh, help us, Lord, to... Uh, be about the business of getting closer to you, and as we do, to bring others with us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.